So this lecture is about constructing confidence intervals for the population mean when the population standard deviation sigma is unknown. We'll run into these situations um, in a lot of times when you are given a data set, right? You're given a random variable, but you have no idea about the population standard deviations. You don't have any information about uh, sigma so that is when you need to use a different distributions rather than the standard normal distributions to construct confidence interval. When you run into the case where sigma is unknown, you want to use t distributions. Sometimes is called student distribution. So what is t distributions? T distributions is a distributions, right? Is a probability distributions that is very similar to the standard normal distributions, but it has its own unique uh, properties. So here are some properties for T distributions. The, the cri critical values um, for T is denoted by TC instead of ZC if you're using standard normal distributions. And the mean, median, and mode are zero. The distribution shape is bell-shaped curve, um, the total under the area is still one, right? And the tails are thicker compared to the standard normal distributions. So let me draw a um, vertical bar here and then So if the red one, the red distributions is the normal distributions, then the blue one is one of the uh, curve of T distributions. You know, you see why I'm saying it's one of the curves of the T distributions. It's because T distributions is a family of curves and each of the curves is determined by um, a parameter is called the degree of freedom. And the degree of freedom is calculated using N, which is the sample size and the degree of freedom is equals to n minus one, okay? So the blue lines here, the blue curve here is one of um, the curves in the T distributions. And you can see that the tail are thicker, the tails on the left and the tails on the right are thicker compared to the standard normal distributions. Again, the red curve is the standard normal distributions. Okay. As T, as the degree of freedom increases, the T distribution approaches the standard normal distribution. What does it mean? That means if, let's say for this curve here, um, the standard, uh, the degree of freedom for the blue curve is, let's say five, okay. And then if I increase my, my uh, degree of freedom to 20, then this blue curve here is one is my T distribution curve for the degree of freedom of 20. Okay, and you can see that. And then if I increase my degree of freedom, right, to let's say 35, then this gonna be my T distributions. And you can see that isn't getting the T distribution curve as degree of freedom increases, is getting approaching to the standard normal distribution curve, which is the red one, okay? The tails are getting thinner when the degree of freedom increases. So then the T distributions approaches to the standard normal distributions. What is degree of freedom? Degree of freedom is N minus one. So in other words, when you increase your uh, sample size, the T distributions will be approximates the uh, standard normal distributions. Okay. And then another variables, another properties is the standard deviations, right? 
varies with sample size, but greater than one. So the standard, standard deviations of the distributions will be different depending on the sample size, but it's always, always greater than one because one is the standard deviations of the standard normal distributions. All right. So this is some properties of T distributions. And then um, we have the T, the T values here that this is the t value that is calculating using the sample mean, uh, population mean, the sample, st uh, the sample standard deviations, and the n. And we're going to use these t values later in chapter seven when we running a t test. All right. So how can we use the t-distributions in order to construct confidence interval? First, let me introduce you the t-table. So this is the t-table. And then if you look at the t-distribution, it's called the t-table here. The first column is degree of freedom, right? This is the degree of freedom column. And the first row here is the level of confidence. And as you, as, as you remember that we talked about level of confidence when we construct confidence interval. The level of confidence C is 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 0 0.95, 98, 99, and so on and so forth. Okay. In this chapter, we just need to pay attention to the level of confidence. One tail and two tails, we will talk about one tail and two tail test in chapter seven. So for an example, if the degree of freedom of my T distribution is nine, okay, and then the confident, the level confidence C is 0 0.95, then the T distribution, the T critical values is 2.262. Again, if the degree of freedom is nine, if the level of confidence is 0 0.95, then the T critical value is gonna be 2.262. And remember, you need to find the critical values in order to construct confidence interval. Okay, if the degree of freedom is nine, that means the sample size is 10. All right. Let's look at um, the T distributions when you have larger degree of freedom. So if I look at the degree of freedom is 50, and if my um, level of confidence is, is still 0 0.95, then my T, T critical value is 2.009. You can compare these two values here, right? You have the same level of confidence, but you have a different degree of freedom. So this is so n equals to 51. Then as you increase your degree of freedom, the T critical values decreases. As you increase the degree of freedom here, the T critical values decreases, even you having the same level of confidence. So this, if, if your T critical values, right, decreases, that means your margin of errors is smaller, is narrower. That means you have a better estimations for your population mean. That's why the bigger of the sample size that you can get, the better of your estimation is gonna be. Well, let's look at example number seven. Seven, find the critical value TC for 95% confidence interval when the sample size is 14. So when the sample size is 14 and is, no, and is 15, then the degree of freedom is gonna be 14, right? So we know the degree of freedom, we know the confidence level C, we can find the critical value. So TC equals two. Uh, 
um, 14 is the degree of freedom. 95 is the level of confidence. So 2.145 should be your answer. Okay. Next one, again, the sample size is 15. So the degree of freedom is, should be 14. So then, and the level of confidence is 90. So 0 0.9, what is same degree of freedom, but the level of confidence is smaller. So you have a smaller value, 1.761. This is an example of when you have the same degree of freedom, but you have different level of confidence, then um, you have a different uh, critical values, right? It, when you decrease your level of confidence, given you having the same degree of freedom, your T values, the critical values decreases. When you decrease your level of confidence, that means you decreasing your uh, margin of error. And that means your um, T critical values decreases. So the margin of error decreases as well. So you will capture the population mean in a narrower um, range. However, the degree of freedoms has decreased right to a lower degree like you have less confidence to capture the population mean with a narrower range of values okay so once you know how to find critical values using t distributions you can construct confidence interval using the t distributions and again you want to use the t distributions when sigma is unknown when sigma is unknown then you can use s right the sample standard deviations replace for sigma and you have to use tc which is the t distributions in order to construct a uh, margin of error e Notice that before using the formula, you need to make sure that the sample is random, one conditions, the population is normally distributed or the sample size is at least 30. So if one of these conditions violated, you cannot use T distributions to construct this margin of error, a margin of error. Again, the sample has to be random. The normal, the populations has to be e either normally distributed or the sample size has to be less, at least 30. These are the three conditions that you need to make sure that you have before you can use this formula, before you can use uh, the T distributions. Okay, this is a guidelines on constructing confidence interval for a population mean when sigma is unknown. First, um, you make sure that all the conditions satisfied, right? Sample is random, Populations normally distributed or the sample size is at least 30. Then you can use, uh, you can find the sample mean, you can find the sample standard deviations, and you determine the degree of freedom, right? N minus one, you find the critical values that corresponds to the level of confidence and the degree of freedom. And then once you have all of this information, you can construct, you can find the margin of error using this formula here. T is a, t, a critical value, S is the sample st standard deviations, N is a sample size, N is a sample size. And then once you have the margin of error, you can construct the left and the, the right endpoint uh, for the confidence interval.
All right, let's look at an example. In a random sample of eight cell phones, the mean full price details is $526.50. The standard deviations of a sample is $184. Assuming the population is normally distributed, use a t-distribution to find the marginal error and construct a 95 confidence interval for the population mean and then interpret the result. So let's write out all the information that we have. A random sample, so sample is random, so that's the first conditions, right? And the sample size is eight. The mean of the sample is 526 and 50 cents. The standard deviations of the sample is 184. The population is normally distributed, so we good? Then we can use a t-distribution, yes, to find the margin of error. Um, so again, E equals two. If you use the T distributions, is then you have to use this formula S divided by square root N. N is A, so the degree of freedom should be seven. And what is the uh, confidence level C 0 0.95? Then what is T C? Degree of freedom is seven. Um, 9.95 is the confidence interval. So 2.365 should be my critical value. Then I can plug it in here, 2.365 times to 184 divided by square root of eight to get margin of error. So much of our error that we found is $153.85. Okay. Once we have the margin of error, we can construct 95 cents confidence interval should be the mean is 526.50 minus 153.86. So 372.64. And 526.5 plus 153.86, 680.36. So this is the confidence interval that we uh, that we constructed. Then how can we interpret this result? Interpretations. You can say that with 95% um, confidence at at the level of confidence of 95% or 0 0.95, the The mean, right, full, the mean full retail price of cell phones in the market is in between $372.64 to
again at the level of confidence of 95% or 0.95 the mean full retail price of cell phones is between uh, $372 and $680 so the range right of your estimation is pretty big because the margin of error is around $150 All right, let's uh, go to the next example, light bulb manufacturing. A company manufactures light bulbs, right? And the company wants the light bulbs to have mean lifespan of a thousand hours. They want to have, to, they want the light bulbs to have a mean life of a thousand hours. So this average is maintained by periodically testing random samples of 16 light bulbs. If T values falls between negative T0.99 and T0.99, then the company will be satisfied that it is manufacturing acceptable light bulbs. For a random sample, the mean span of the sample is about 1,015 hours, and the standard deviation is about 25 hours. Assume that the lifespans are approximately dis normal distributed. The question is, is the company making acceptable light bulbs? Explain. Okay. So the situation is, you manufacturing light bulbs and your your standard your light bulbs will meet the standard when if the mean lifespan of all the light bulbs is about a thousand hours. In order to um, know whether your uh, products right are meeting the standard, you test you do random sample testing. For example may periodically every week or every month you pick a sample of 16 light bulbs and you test those 16, 16 light bulbs right to see what is the mean life of that sample and then one time they pick a sample and the mean lifespan of the sample is about 1015 hours so n is 16 which is the sample size right and the mean lifespan of this sample is about 1,015 hours. And the standard deviations is about 25 hours, okay? Assuming that the lifespans are approximately normal distribution, that, so that means we can use T distributions. And we have to use T distributions because sigma is unknown. So the samples is random. Um, the population is normally distributed, then we're going to use T distributions. All right. And then what do we use the T distribution for? We want to find, um, and another information that we haven't written down is the company wants the light bulbs to have a mean lifespan of a thousand hours okay so that that's the desire that's desire um mean lifespan for their products okay and then if the t values right from your samples if the t value falls between negative t0.99 and t0.99 then the company satisfy uh, will be satisfied so from this information here so the desire is um, 1000 hours 1000 hour here is the um, expected right The expectations is the mean should be 1,000 hour.
If the expectation is expectation is one thousand hours for the mean lifespan, and the sample, uh, the mean lifespan of the sample is one thousand fifteen, that means the margin of error, right? The error, the sample error that this sample is made is about fifteen hours. All right, so we know E, and we know if we use T distributions, and then we need to find, and we want to find the T values, right? The T values of this sample. And we know that E equals to T value, right? Times S divided by square root of N. We know E, so E is 15. We need to find T and S is 25 and N is 16. So then we can solve for T is going to be 15 25, 2.4, 15 times Square root of 16 divided by 25 is 2.4. Okay. And I'm wondering whether this T values, so we found is 2.4. If the T values here is in between these two values, then the company is doing is will be satisfied. The company will be happy with the sample or with the products that they're making. So let's go to, let's see, what is T negative T 0 0.99 and what is T of 0 0.99? Again, the samples is 16, the sample size is 16, so the degree of freedom is 15. And 99.99 is a level of confidence, right? Then 2.947. So what does that mean? That means negative T 0 0.099 is negative 2.49, And the T 0 0.99 is 2.947. Okay. Does T 2.4 in between this two T value? Yes, it does. So here and 2.4 is here. So yes, 2.4 is in between negative 2.947 and positive 2.97. What does that mean? That means the company is happy with the products that they're making um, by doing sem random sample testing. And the sample this time, do, the samples this time, the sample that they uh, collected this time, does satisfy the conditions for the products to be uh, well making products. So again, this lecture is about constructing confidence interval for the population mean, given that sigma is unknown. And again, when sigma is unknown, you have to use T distributions and using S in order to compute the margin of error. But before you can use the T distributions, you need to make sure that the conditions satisfy. The conditions are sample is random. The population is, is either that the population is normally distributed or the sample size has to be at least 30.